Hi guys, it's me again, Melissa, and I was, as you can tell, my hair is wet. That's because I just came out of the shower. But while I was sitting in the shower, I was thinking about common myths about self-publishing. So because I'm a self-published author who's published two books already and is on, and I'm working on my third, uh, I, I thought it'd be an excellent time to, you know, separate fact from fiction and, and tell you about what I've learned about the process of, se of self-publishing. So here's seven myths about self-publishing, officially debunked by a self-published author, okay? So number one is the process of self-publishing is easy. <laughs> no, not at all. It took me it took me years to to actually find the courage to self-publish and once I did the process of putting together both my both of my books both my poetry collection and and my first novel Griffin Unbowed took years Griffin Unbowed itself took or took 12 years uh, from from the time that Nicole and I first started writing to to the uh, to the point that it uh, that it is available today for you to read. Now, nothing in the process of either of these things was easy. Yeah, granted, uh, a poetry collection should be easy in theory because you're literally just collecting your poetry and put, and slapping it together, and then um, and then sticking a cover on it, and then it's out there. And and to a, up to a certain point, that was true. You know, the poetry collection was the first time that I ever, uh, first book that I had ever published. So, so the process was certainly very simple, but that's only because I never expected to sell anything. Um, I started solely on Smashwords, um, and I just had the front cover and I had the contents. But over the process of it being published in 2015 to, to, uh, to approximately 2018, I went through several revisions of that book while it was live on uh, and available for sale um, because because I learned more about formatting, uh, how to format specifically for a book, and I also made adjustments for uh, for making the transition to uh, from an ebook to a physical printed book, um, which I have right here. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I made some adjustments, uh, and I made several adjustments um, in between the ebook, which was which was relatively simple to publish, you know, because it's it's just a collection of stuff. But the process of actually correctly formatting uh, the the book for print was a lot harder. Because it was the first time I had ever done it, but also stood me in good stead for for when I for when I did the production for for Griffin on on you know, um, and and that's and that's the thing a lot of people don't realize about self publishing is that you're not just the writer, you are the publisher, you are the publisher, you and in a lot of cases you are also the editor, you are you are the the, desi uh, the designer uh, and formatter of the contents, you know, you have, you wear so many hats in the process of publishing, of self-publishing your book, of publishing completely independently, you know, so the fact, uh, so it's only easy up to a certain point. It's easy if you are pre prepared for the, the amount of work that you have to do and and self-publishing is a learning process of all the things from start to finish, you know, whereas with traditional publishing, you know, you have a team of editors, you have a team of designers and formatters and everything, and all you have to do as, as the writer is just write. You don't get to do that with self-publishing. You have to do everything. So, so yeah, no, the process of self-publishing is not as easy as it looks. All right. So, that's one off the list. Number two is self-publishing is for writers who aren't good enough to be traditionally published. That's the second myth. This, unfortunately, this is ridiculously common, a ridiculously common thing that people believe that if you haven't gotten, 
traditionally published and you decide to self-publish your work, it's because you're not good enough. That's not the case at all. So, uh, uh, self-published authors who thrive are the ones who mix genres. And, and the thing about traditional publishing is that they don't know what to do with authors who mix genres. And the reason I know that is because I am a mixed genre author with Griffin Unbowed. I'm, uh, we mixed urban fantasy and science fiction and horror. And when we, when we tried to, to, to talk to different publishers and agents, we, we kept getting responses back that this sounds great, but we don't know what to do with this. We don't know how to market this. And like I said, that weird mix of genre fiction works, functions much better in self-publishing than it does in traditional publishing. So it isn't about what's good enough to get into traditional publishing. It's about what's marketable. And if you mix genres, you're not marketable enough. And if, and, and, whereas if you stick to one particular genre, you'll have a better chance of getting traditionally published. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees in anything. And also, if you think that only good authors get traditionally published, <laughs> when's the last time you read something by, say, E.L. James? <clears throat> Enough said. Myth number three, you should never design your own covers. Okay, now this, now this, it, it depends. You know, if you, if you aren't an, an art, a writer who's also has artistic talent, then you're not going to want to design your own cover. And that's okay. You're going to, you're going to want to, to hire somebody who's good enough to do it. And the thing, and the thing is this, this whole thing about you should never design your own your own covers has been has been promoted by self-published authors who can afford to pay someone else to to create covers for them. Not every self-published author is starting with a little extra money in the bank in order to be able to pay someone. I mean, look at these look at these two covers. Okay? These are covers I personally designed, and they look pretty good. They look pretty good. Having, having alternative covers for these books simply would have not been possible because I cannot finance, uh, finance it. Fortunately, I'm competent enough at Photoshopping and, and whatnot in order to be able to create my own covers. Not every writer can, but those who can, should, uh, who do have artistic talent, shouldn't be told that they can't because the whole point of doing your own thing in self-publishing is taking your own approach to begin with. It's all about taking your own approach, doing things your own way. Now, the one thing I would recommend for a self-published author who wants to create their own cover is that is to look at the covers in your particular genre or genres that are popular on on Amazon and Smashwords and all those kind of different places. The ones the ones that are sell, are selling really well. Don't now. Don't try to copy them, but do try it. Uh, do try to get a little inspiration from them. For for the cover for Griffin Unbowed, I drew a lot of inspiration from the more simple designs of of horror uh, of the covers for horror novels. So, so that's just a thing to keep in mind. If you do have the talent, do create your own cover. And I I also um. And for me personally, I use. I use GIMP, which is which is a free alternative to Photoshop, and I use Canva, which is online, available online and also free. And they actually have te uh, templates that you can work off of. I'll put a link to to both of those down in the description for you. Um, but but yes, if you want to design your own cover, go ahead. It's not going to kill anything. And if that and if it's it's really no different than designing your own thumbnails for. For YouTube videos, <laughs> if you know how to do it, go ahead and do it. It's not it's it's not going to hurt anything, you know. The the wonderful thing about about knowing what the rules are is knowing when to break them. You know, just don't don't be overconfident in your skills as as a visual artist. If you don't have the talent as a visual artist, then definitely do, you know. Or if you over tend to overestimate your talent and you realize that the cover you created looks like crap, then then do you know try to try to give a little, uh, give a little cash towards, you know, towards, uh, you know, towards a different cover designer. Oh, also there's, um, there's a website for pre-existing cover designs. 
that's really that that they have really really good covers and they're not prohibitively expensive so i'll put that down in the link for you for you as well if you're looking for a, a good book cover but but you're not an artist so <laughs> so there'll be stuff for you to be able to create your own covers and, or buy uh, buy reasonably priced covers down in the in the description so <laughs> anyway on to the next one myth number four self-publishing your work costs a lot of money no no it, it doesn't have to because the fact of the matter is i self-publish using smashwords and kindle direct publishing and those don't cost me anything they take, they take, they take a little money out of the total uh, cost of the of each each copy sold for for their dis, uh, the cost of distribution. That's it. I do not have to pay, physically pay anything for for having my my books up on either of those things. But you know the the uh, the paperbacks are a little expensive because they're print on demand. But you know. The cost isn't on my side in regards to the distribution and printing. It's it's forwarded to the customer, so so that's not something I have I have I personally have to worry about. Um, the and the thing is with self with self publishing, it only costs as much as money as, as much money as you're willing to put out. You know, if you can afford putting a little money towards a cover, like as like I said earlier then yeah do that thing if you can afford a little a little a little bit to have somebody market your book like i did i spent about sixty dollars on a marketing plan last last august for with then then you can then you can do that as well you can uh there there are alternatives but ultimately you're only spending as much as as much as is feasible for you personally and if you can't spend the money then what you have have to spend is extra time to do it yourself so there is expense but it's not all monetary expense <laughs> okay so number five self-publishing is a scam this is not true this is not remotely true um and that that is not to say that there aren't that there aren't scammers in the pub in the self-publishing industry because there definitely are there are there are self-publishing houses that that make make the author pay like an exorbitant amount of money, like literally thousands of dollars just to get just to get your book out there. And yes, so yes, there are scammers out there, but self-publishing itself is not a scam. In fact, if you want to be sure whether or not you're being scammed by going a, uh, going with a specific publisher, I will put down a link in the description that provides a list of common self uh, of the self publishers the the big self publishers uh the big self publishing houses up there you know so that you can so that you can look and see if they're on uh, see if the the house that you want to go with is actually on on the list or not and if they're if they're like marked as danger or as, if they're reliable so on and so forth and i can tell you from personal experience smashwords and Kindle Direct are both very reliable, and they have good marks on on that page. So, so if you want to go with those two, <laughs> you're definitely making a smart move. But yeah, do watch out for scammers. But self publishing is, itself is not a scam. Just be cautious. That's all. Uh, number six, self publishing your work won't get you respect. Okay, so that all depends, really. What, what do you define as respect? Do you want to be a critical darling? You know, do you want to have a lot of good reviews? Do you want to be able to court, you know, traditional publishing houses eventually? It is entirely possible. Now with the traditional publishing houses, you might have to eventually go under a different name in order to be published with them if they see that you're self-published. You know, that is, that is a price you may have to pay. But there are also, there are also, um, people who've, who've got, become very successful in terms of, of, of their critical reach, you know, and in terms of their audience reach, you know, so, so self-publishing isn't, you're not debasing yourself by, do, by doing this in any, in any way, you know, um, it's, it's, it's more about what, how much control 
you want as the author, as the creative person? How, how much control do you want over your art and the, life, uh, the lifetime of that art? That's the difference between self-publishing and traditional publishing. Because traditional publishers, in, in exchange for, for doing all, the, all those things that we mentioned, the editing, the book design, what, uh, the distribution, the marketing, every, everything else, in exchange, they own the rights to your work. Whereas with self-publishing, you, you still own the rights to your work. So, so it's, it's not about, it's not about respect. The respect you get is based, is, is based on, is based on whatever you do to promote your work and the quality of the work. You know, it has nothing to do with whether or not you're self-published or traditionally published. And finally, number seven, self-publishing is easy money. <laughs> yeah, right. There's maybe about 40 self-published authors who have, who are able to make a living off of, off of self-publishing. But you know what? The same is very, it can be said of plenty of traditional authors, uh, traditionally published authors as well. Most traditionally published authors cannot afford to give up their day jobs. Uh, and the same holds true of self-published authors as well. There literally is no difference. So just, so if you're expecting to go into, into being an author, period and expecting you know to, the money to fall uh to fall on top of you that's not going to happen that's not going to happen unless you really have have something that's unless you have like that one in a million happenstance it's not going to happen you are still going to have to find a way to uh, find a way and means to support yourself write what you love do it for the love of of the writing and get your book out there because either way whether you're self-published or traditionally published you're going to have to keep your day job to keep the roof over your head. You know, you're going to, you're going to have to find other means of financial support because chances are you are not a J.K. Rowling, you are not a Stephen King, you know, uh, and, and in some cases you might be glad for that, but, um, but the chances of having success as an author period are very, that kind of success as an author period are very, very small. There's a reason we love them so much because they are the Cinderella stories of, of, of publishing, you know, and, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of the very talented, uh, a lot of very talented authors, you know, especially in the past, you know, they did nothing but constantly crank out work and ultimately died in poverty. You know, Edgar Allan Poe is the, is the greatest Gothic horror writer ever known. And, and he was, and he was dirt, dirt poor, verging on homelessness and suffering from alcoholism when he died, you know, and I know that is such a, and I know that is such a downer, but the fact of the matter is, if you go into the arts, do not expect to instantly be everyone's darling. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Do it, do it just because you love the thing you're doing and you, and because once you stop seeing dollar signs in everything, you'll you'll start being becoming a lot happier with uh, with your life. And I know that's hard in this day and age and in the world we live in, you know. But but just try to focus on your love of the art. And you know, and it's like uh, <laughs> and it's like that one movie says, "Build it, and they will come." <laughs> so I'm sorry to end this end this video on such a downer on such a downer note, but I hope this was helpful to you if you are considering self-publishing, you know, so, so I hope, I hope to see you guys again, uh, next week, same time, same channel, <laughs> and I'll, and I love you guys and I'll see you later. Bye.